I came to this story fully aware of the controversy it would generate. I would be speaking to a designated terrorist. But after 20 years of covering the region, I thought this was an important opportunity. Since bin Laden in 1998, no senior al-Qaeda leader has agreed to a televised interview with a Western reporter. Today, Jelani, who says he's long since broken with al-Qaeda, controls Syria's last opposition stronghold, a safe haven for refugees from around the country. If he falls, many more migrants could flood north. <laughs> Jelani's 10,000-plus man army, effectively backed by Turkey, is now the only thing that prevents it. There are some people in Washington who think it may be wise to work with Jelani, including a top American diplomat in the region during the Bush, Obama, and Trump administrations, James Jeffrey. Look, he's at least bad option of the various options on Idlib, which is one of the most important places in Syria, which is one of the most important places right now in the Middle East. When there is not the normal setup of nation states and of international norms and rules, you wind up with groups like this that do things you don't like. But in the here and now, are the folks you have to deal with to avoid even worse things. How can you trust somebody that's just trying to survive and continue to remain in power? There are people that have met with Jelani who are saying we should give him a chance. I think it's letting him and the organization off the hook. I spent seven days in Idlib, seeing, of course, what Jelani wanted me to see and hearing what he wanted me to hear. I also spoke to his critics and his victims. Jelani told me that we don't torture. There is no torture in our prisons. That's a difficult one to believe. I mean, we have testimony that says otherwise. Jelani, they say, is a man that can't be trusted. I've come here to investigate. <laughs>